Welcome to It's a Woman's World, a show which discusses any and all topics under the sun from a woman's point of view. Here's today's moderator, Nadia Giordana. Hello and welcome to It's a Woman's World. I'm Nadia Giordana and I will be moderating today's episode. It's all about love and romance. <laughs> Tell me, what's the craziest thing you ever did in the name of love? Let me start by introducing our panelists. First of all, we have on the end here, Dr. Susan Strauss. Hi, Nadia. This will be a very interesting panel, I think. I think so, too. It's good to have you here today. Thank you. All right. And then we have Ali Naithani, Hello. who is our usual, regular host on this program. Glad to be in this seat today. Yeah, it's kind of fun <laughs> to do it the other way around. Yeah, absolutely. And Rashida Fisher. Yes. Oh, welcome, Rashida. Thank you. It's good to have you here with us today. Indeed. It will be a great topic. It is. And uh, let me just start the ball rolling by talking about, I'll ask you a question, does true love exist? And if so, what is that? And then we'll just go on from there. <laughs> so who's going to start? <laughs> yes, I guess I, 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 yes, I think true love exists. What is it is the clincher mm -hmm. because I think there's many different types of love and I think you could have true love for a, a friend, for example. Mm -hmm. But I think what we're talking about today romantic. is romantic love. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it all depends how it is defined and I'm not going to go there particularly, but I think that yes, true love does exist. But I think you can love many people as a true love as well. Well, that's mm -hmm. another thought is, uh, uh, tr and I think true love morphs, changes as to what you expect from it in different decades. I can speak for that in different, different yes. decades in mm -hmm. a lifetime. And I, uh, I also think that, uh, yeah, you can love more than one person. Mm -hmm. I don't know about simultaneously. Some people say you can, but that's a that's another that's panel. Another <laughs> <laughs> and we, what about, uh, or Ali, what do you think about what is true love? Yeah, well, that's a question. I think as you've asked it, I think about it in many ways. So the love, like, absolutely towards, like, I'm married, so mm -hmm. the love towards my husband, and how has that evolved and changed from the first moment I set eyes on him to where we are today? It just We just have been married for 20 years. All right. And so I think as you go through the experiences and the, you know that that for me has has been redefined over the years, mm -hmm. uh, definitely. And don't you think the love that you feel for him now is different than the love you did when you were in the throes of <laughs> first romance and lust and all of that? Yes. I think it. I think it you mentioned it evolves, it does, it changes. Yeah, it definitely changes. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think society um, tends to taint our mm -hmm. um, perception and our definition of love. Mm -hmm. And media. With the, and media mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. um, with it needing to be this whirlwind, butterflies in mm -hmm. your stomach, and, and when that subsides, then what is left and is that constitute the real love that takes to maintain a long-term relationship, mm -hmm. which is commitment, respect, you know, and all of those kinds of things. So I think there are multiple elements that make up true love I, and I, sustainable love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had read that when we first fall in love or get that butterfly business, mm -hmm. that the changes in the brain really mirror um, with the neurotransmitters addiction. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that yes. that has oh. to, yeah, and mm -hmm. we would all go bonkers if we mm -hmm. were like that mm -hmm. for the whole relationship, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for however long that exceeded. Yeah. And that that has to die down and for you to really be able to see the person you're in a relationship with mm -hmm. for who they really are rather than who you projected them yeah. to be in mm -hmm. the throes of the romance and the butterfly. And the addiction. Mm -hmm. And the addiction. It sense. is like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And then the, uh, uh, w like you say, when you start out in a relationship and it morphs and changes, the expectations that you have. Sometimes relationships, and, and I think I read this recently, from unmet or unreal, maybe unmet, unre unrealistic and unmet expectations. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'll even add uncommunicated expectations. Oh, yes. oh that's a good yes. one. Right, because there's mm -hmm. one, you know, it's it's one thing to have an expectation, but it's another thing for your partner not to know that that is an mm -hmm. expectation that you have. You know, many uh, that move from being in a relationship 
a courtship, so to speak, to engagement and then marriage, there's this uncommunicated shift in expectations mm -hmm. that the other partner is not aware of. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, and that can cause lots of conflict um, and hurt feelings. Yeah, and it can go both ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think maintaining long-term relationships, love or otherwise, over a period of a lifetime when we think about romance and marriage, that's a challenge in and of itself. What about uh, transitional periods of relationships? Now, you're single. Yep, you in haven't, a long-term relationship. You're in a long-term relationship, yes. and most mm -hmm. of your relationships you mentioned have been long-term long -term. relationships. Mm -hmm. I'm married, but divorced a couple of times. Oh. <laughs> I, I must not have planned, pro planned properly in the beginning, but I've noticed that those um, things have changed over time. And of course, uh, uh, the, my husband that I have now, he's a keeper, so I'm happy about that. Aww. We've been married for 22 years, I think oh, it wonderful. is. Oh, wonderful. And uh, so over time, don't those things change a little bit? And I think absolutely. Each relationship you're in, ideally you learn something about yourself mm -hmm. and what your needs are and the kind of person that you want and need to be in a relationship with, mm -hmm. right? We have these idealistic um, expectations, mm -hmm. desires of what we think is a good partner for us. And that might not always be the case because it could be tainted with media, with fluff, with, mm -hmm. you know, lots of things, uh, even family expectations yes. about who we're supposed to be with. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it takes some knowing yourself and who you are to really find a good partner mm -hmm. and someone that is equally as uh, self-aware and um, can meet you mm -hmm. in that relationship. Yeah, and I think as you, you've said that also, you think about how much can you give to this person? How mm -hmm. much do you start and stop? How much do you invest in it? And yes. when things are hard, um, at the end of the day, do you sit back and say, well, I, I made this, if it's a marriage, for example, do you, I made this commitment mm -hmm. um, and I, I need to make this person the best that they can be, even though I might be I angry like at them like or frustrated yes. with them. Sometimes having to put aside uh, some things to think through that way for the best for them. Yes. Do you think that marriage, uh, the, the, the institution of marriage helps to make it work a little bit harder during the tough times or does that make much difference to people? So I'm a believer um, in marriage, although I don't want to be married for myself. Mm -hmm. And I, um, my example is my parents. They've been married for all of my life and I truly believe that they would be committed to each other regardless mm -hmm. of a marriage certificate. And so I don't necessarily believe that the institution of marriage or the legality of marriage helps people stay committed because we see our divorce rate is, you know, over 50% of marriages end in divorce. And there are lots of reasons oh, yeah. um, for that statistic. So the other thing I wondered, I've wondered about in regard to that question, and I've only been married, so and I've never had another relationship with anybody else. Mm -hmm. This is my husband was my first relationship, and I married oh. him. So I mm -hmm. don't know. I mm -hmm. really do not know what that's like. Mm -hmm. So the thing I think about though is, if I wasn't married to him, would it have been a lot easier to leave, right, mm -hmm. when there were problems, yeah. or mm -hmm. if yeah. if we are in a it's when you're married you're bound by certain terms mm -hmm. right so I've often thought about people who live together and mm -hmm. I've seen a, a, per, a particular couple that I know live together had a house together uh, but then when there were problems one person left and it was a free f there was a certain freedom about that that mm. I didn't think that if they were in a marriage they would have had so much freedom to leave that's true the house probably complicated it a little bit since they had a house together but it was but only in one person's name okay do you yeah, see what that I'm makes saying? a difference so yeah. it mm -hmm. I there will often a... have thought about this question and thought does a marriage it does it because you have taken whether it's the vows that matter to you uh, as a something as a personal statement or mm -hmm. the legal implications mm -hmm. the financial implications does it make does that make a difference is my question. I, I, I don't I don't, don't know. know for sure. I've been divorced twice. Yeah. Both times 
I thought going through the divorce was very difficult, mm. very painful, and it's all those things that you identified mm -hmm. that you look at, economics, etc., but you also look at the social aspects of it. Mm -hmm. It changes your life. It mm -hmm. might change who your friends are. Mm -hmm. You wonder how people are feeling about you, especially I've been divorced twice. Mm -hmm. I've never lived with anybody, and I, I, I think, I'm only guessing, that I would feel perhaps less of a commitment living with somebody than being married to them. But I don't know, never having experienced mm -hmm. that, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I thought divorce was hell. And mm -hmm. I didn't, by that time, I maybe still love them, I don't know. I just didn't want to have anything to do with them. Mm -hmm. But it was extremely difficult. And then if you mm -hmm. add children mm -hmm. to it, yes. and it's hard. And with the second divorce, my children were adults. It was still hard it's because still I think, difficult. what am I doing to my kids, even mm -hmm. though they're adults, I see. Mm -hmm. by divorcing their stepfather, who still stays in touch with them, and we've been divorced mm -hmm. for 20 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd ever want to get married again. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm afraid of it. Mm -hmm. I don't trust it. Maybe I don't trust me. Maybe that's a more accurate thing to say. I don't know that I trust my ability to select an individual that could be long-term, even though I'm in a relationship now. have been for a year, and I tell you, if 20 years ago when I went through that divorce, anybody would have told me you'd get fall in love with somebody again and stay with them for a year, I would have thought you were out here ever loving mine. There's no way. And yet here I am, and I didn't expect it. So I, to me, though, there is more of a commitment to marriage. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I think there is. Hmm. The, I think the social piece can't be underestimated. Hmm. I didn't think about that, the social piece, until yeah, you said it. Yeah, because you're yeah. kind of ostracized, mm -hmm. and then you become, when you're single, you become a threat. Okay. Because you're a single woman, if you try to hang out with some of your other friends, it's a threat, because then they think, well, it's, my husband always thought she was this or that, and now look, yeah. and he's looking at her. Yeah. You become a threat because you're single it all of a sudden. It changes things. Mm. Yeah. It really yeah. does. I do remember when, uh, when I, I got divorced, that uh, a gathering came up, and the friends didn't know who to yes. ask, who, who to invite, or what. But they they were, it was you know the 80s. People were pretty trendy, and I said, well, they just ask us both and let us decide. And and my ex-husband said, I don't want you to be there if you're going to bring a date. He yes. said that to me, and I said, Well, are you bringing a yeah. date? And he <laughs> said, Yes. And I said. <laughs> yeah, they had it both yeah. ways. You know, so I let him, <laughs> in, in the end, I let him have the friends. And, and I went off and up. I made new yes. friends. It's, it's another loss <laughs> is what it, it is. It was a loss, yeah. You, you lose the future with that person. Yeah. You yeah. lose friends. Um, and it's sort of like, well, I didn't want, I, I, if I wanted to bring somebody, that's okay. But I don't want to see him with somebody else. And I don't want him, yeah. but I don't want him to want somebody and else. And I could either. have done that. I must have been willing to give up the friends because I was independent enough. I could have said, well, then, you know, tough if you don't want to see me there with a yes. date. Mm -hmm. So I must not have really wanted to go. <laughs> it, it's hard, <laughs> though. Not. It is. That whole social piece is, is yeah, tough. It is social. And did you still love him at that point? And, you know, I probably did. Although I initiated the divorce and thought I didn't. In hindsight, I think counseling probably could have saved that marriage. Because years later, I say, wow, you know, there's, there's still that love piece that's there, even though I'm happily married now. Uh, you're, I think your relationship, your, the ability to love and compartmentalize that love gets more... Uh, more intricate as you get older. So mm -hmm. I think I did in one form or another, but it's, I guess, it's, it's, and it's I think that speaks to the, the our earlier question about true love and what is it. What yes. is and it? The, oh, and that, I you know, I leave that there are different types of love that you mm -hmm. can experience for an individual. Romantic love is something very different than a familial love. Yes. You know, you created a family with this person. That's what I think and it there was a familiar into. love. Yep. I still care about your well-being. Yep. Yes. I still yes. care yes. about your health. You know, I love you. Yeah. I care about That's who more you are and how you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Then think about your first love. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about, I had read an article in the paper one couple years ago talking about all the re high school reunions coming up oh. yeah. and talking about <laughs> people's first loves when they were in high school. And why does that first love, I know for me, my first love, I will always love him. Yeah. He's got yeah. a place in my heart that nobody else will ever have. Mm -hmm. And so it's talking about that, that it's a form love. of puppy love, and it's kind of like that. It's but, strong. But it, 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 that always well, stays that, there. It's it that does. first 
you know, of when everything. we talk about addiction, right, to yes. your, yeah. your point earlier, when you talk about addiction, it's the first experience yes. that drives all of the other desire to in, indulge. Point. It is. And so that one always sticks yes. with you. And the old phrase, the first cut is the deepest, that yeah. first Ooh, rejection yeah. Yeah. where you really do feel love, and that is not returned and it's unrequited. Yes. That one, that one lasts too. Mm -hmm. I know the person I'm in a relationship with now is um, from another country mm -hmm. and he wants to move back there at mm -hmm. some point and so when you talk about true love now we say we love each other but part of me is saying now listen here you <laughs> love me but you're gonna go live over halfway around the world I don't know is that love or not and he says well come with me well I I don't want to go with so well, how does that what about long love? distance relationships no, I won't do it mm. because how do you that's do that? you know that's some people say huh. long distance relationships work as long as you see each other within a certain amount of regularity right. I don't know if I could do it well doing it from California to Minnesota or Minnesota to New York is one thing but doing it from the United States to another country mm. when it's I don't know what eight or nine miles by flight that's well, a whole you other know, thing I don't know if I could be in a a long-term long-distance relationship but I understand that there are couples that spend significant amounts of time apart because of work mm -hmm. because yes, of other yes. responsibilities mm -hmm. and, and and that is a form of a long-distance relationship because you're not with each other day in and yeah. day out and so you know there are ways that you can maintain connection and feel uh, close to one another uh, whether there's physical distance um, in proximity or not. I don't know. I don't know if I've never been in a long term or, or long distance relationship. I so I can't I say, either. but hypothetically, and um, that I th it's a thing. I, that, what you're talking about, to yeah. me, has a little bit different context with it than somebody's just moving away, period. It's yeah. not for just a job and I'll be back someday. It's toodaloo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, so that to me is a true love. Whatever that is, like right. you say, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a question. Now, I asked the audience at the very beginning of yes. the show, what was the craziest, yeah. funniest, stupidest thing you ever did in the name of love? And I have uh, two sh very short stories to tell. And the first story is about, and it's not about me. Yeah. I really wasn't me. This is a fun show. Oh, yeah, we've heard that I, before. Yeah. <laughs> but this is before the days that we even had the term stalking. And mm. uh, my uh, husband that, uh, that I divorced years ago, we were going on a cruise with another couple. And, 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 and I'll say a fifth wheel. This was a friend of my husband and, or my fiance at the time and uh, the other man there. This was a friend of theirs who uh, booked himself on the cruise, was coming with us, but he didn't want to bring his girlfriend. So he didn't tell her about us. He wanted to be, he was questioning the relationship. <laughs> she, he felt like she was smothering him and all those things. And we didn't care, and he was friends with guys. So anyway, so the five of us go on this cruise, and lo and behold, the girl had found out Oh, oh no! And booked herself on oh. the cruise. Oh, smart woman! And there, <laughs> there we were yes. at the dinner table oh. that night, and and she walks by, and oh my! You know the whole oh, thing. Oh my gosh! I'll tell you that was a very interesting yes. cruise. Was yes. he with anybody else on no. that cruise? No, no, no. So did they hook up on that cruise or uh, not? Uh, I'm it sure they did. It kind of worked out that they, they, they did. I'm sure he they was, connected. He was stuck in that. He wasn't ready to end that relationship. <laughs> oh, and the, no. the most romantic thing I, thing I ever did in the name of love, this one is me. <laughs> All I can say about that is it involves uh, the island of Kauai and a hopefully deserted beach and oh. the hour of midnight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's Wonderful. a nice memory. Yes, and we can kind of put our own image as you to can, what that yeah, was. Whatever yes. you think yes. you want. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what about you guys? Oh. Or somebody you know? You know, I think it's um, all of the stories that I've heard have been everything from stalking mm -hmm. right in the name of love uh, currently that's in on social media right mm -hmm. you peruse through people's profiles 
Does and, that count? And things like that. <laughs> I think so. I think, I, does, think yeah. I think so. It's a part of someone's personality, you know, and, and their identity that you are um, keeping tabs on. But just, you know, gift giving, finding different ways, extravagant ways to uh, express love and care are always the most uh, where you kind of go outside of yourself. Has social media changed? Love I think social media world. changes the way that you communicate about love, mm -hmm. the way that you um, express mm -hmm. your commitment to mm -hmm. someone, changing your status on mm -hmm. social oh, media yes. sites and things That's like that big. as a validation yeah. of the relationship yeah. uh, and things like that. So yeah, definitely technology and social media has changed the way that we communicate uh, relationships to one another. I think it has. Mm -hmm. I think it has. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's, let's see what are some of the other things that we're thinking about. Uh, why are people today getting married later? Hmm. And I, maybe it goes hand in hand with that. When I was 15 years old, uh, my father didn't let me date till I was 16, but when I was 15 year old, other 15 year olds were dating, getting, you know, going in a car and going out on formal dates. The kids today, they're hanging out together in groups, am mm -hmm. I right about that? Yes. And they're marrying later. Mm -hmm. What's the change there? Well, I think for sure for women, right, the career aspect. Yes. And, and the world is just, it's so different now that, mm -hmm. of course, it's well, women have careers and have education. And so I think, number one, that. And I think there's also less fear about having a baby for a woman mm -hmm. uh, later in life. Yeah. There was always mm -hmm. a pressure, I feel like, historically to say, oh, you have to have a baby by the time you're this age. Yeah. But we such, see such a difference in that now. So I think those are some of the, the reasons. And I there used too. to be a I pressure you. that you were an old maid if you weren't married right. by the time yeah. you were 30. Mm -hmm. I think, too, that so many kids today have seen their parents go through divorces, mm -hmm. and they've seen what an awful marriage can be, and mm -hmm. I think many of them are maybe mm -hmm. someday, but I'm not in any hurry to do it. Right. I think that's another element, not yeah. the only thing, but I think it plays a role. And I also think that, I'm using the word kids, at my age everybody's a kid, but yeah. I think that um, from what I understand of the things that I've read that young people in their 20s are more immature than what, for example, Nadia, you and I were when we were in our 20s. Mm. Um, you know, the whole uh, cortex of their brain seems to be slower and a lot of them are still living at home uh, in their basement of their parents. They've not matured. Uh, what are they saying now? You're really not mature until you're 25 and this whole adolescent thing is, mm -hmm. yeah, it takes much longer. I think that plays a they role. They say that. Well, yeah. well, you know, kids, um, young people, we have grown up in a totally different society. That's right. There's so much more to contend with even as you grow and mature um, than earlier generations. I also th think society in, was different and there was a lot more familial support in marriages, even when they happen very early on, than perhaps mm -hmm. is happening now, that you are expected to, there to be a real distinct separation between mm -hmm. your family, mm -hmm. you, husband, wife, children, mm -hmm. um, than before where there was um, an expectation that you have um, you are still a part of a family that is going to help you learn how to be in a marriage, mm -hmm. in, a, in a relationship that perhaps is not there anymore. Additionally, I think the financial piece. Yes, there are so many people that are oh, yeah. just independent in and of themselves, and they don't mind sharing space, sharing mm -hmm. finances, but that's not... Um, a motivating factor for entering into a committed a, a marriage, mm. a legally binding um, marriage. So, and I guess that just speaks to my point that people can be in healthy, loving relationships without the institution of marriage. Mm. And I think you're so. right. I totally agree with you. And I think young people are saying, "Why don't we just live together?" Who says we have to get married? There's mm -hmm. more acceptance mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I think religion. If we get into some of the religious aspects, fewer and fewer people align themselves with a religion anymore and very often it was where you don't live with anybody you don't have sex with anybody yeah. until you're married yes and you certainly don't have a baby unless you're married right. and mm -hmm. all of those social mores right. have changed yeah yes. I think the only thing is I hear that the only thing that's and again very limited experiences I've shared I've only had a relationship with my husband but I think that if I were to live with somebody and have a child 
I would want some of the formalities of marriage. I yes. just feel like I, feel I the same could way. do, mm -hmm. I could I not, too. the four, something about that for me, it's the responsibility, it's the you're in this with me, I and agree. you took and that And once there are step. children. Yeah. 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 If yeah. I were that to have a, a yeah, yeah. I, I think that mm -hmm. would be something really mm -hmm. important yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. It would yeah. to me as well. Yeah. And yet you hear of people, well, like Sam Shepard just died. Oh, he yeah. And Jessica Lange had been they together were never all married. those years. They yeah. were never married. Although they did, they did have children. They did have children, yes. Yeah. And there's been some other celebrities, too. Um, uh, Kate Kate Hudson's mom. Uh, what's Goldie Hawn. Goldie Hawn and... Oh, yes. Kurt Russell? Yeah. Now, yeah. They're, they've been together for umpteen mm, years, yes, too, yeah. and have had I children. Like and yeah. yeah, I'm like you. I would want would that you? as well. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think if there weren't children and, and you were talking about whether or not you wanted to be married or not in this day and age. I, I don't think I would be all that hung up on the certificate of marriage if it didn't involve children. Yeah, yeah. I feel the same way when oh. I don't want to be married. Mm -hmm. if, if children were to enter the picture, I would mm -hmm. definitely yeah. want my relationship to look yeah. a little bit more mm -hmm. traditional. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, Anna, Anna, being at my age, in the retirement age, if I should happen to be, and I want to stay married and happily married, yes. but if I were, if I were uh, facing whether or not I would be dating or marrying at this point in my life, I would probably choose a long-term relationship and not marriage because I wouldn't be having more children, so it wouldn't make sense to me to complicate life with all of that part of it. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think that would be important to me now. Yeah, mm -hmm. Well, I, I agree with you. Having been divorced twice, mm -hmm. I'm scared to death to get married again. <laughs> and I, at this age, I don't think I would want to either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's see, what other things can we talk about? We only have a short period of time. Is anybody here had any experience with polygamy or any, I mean, does that fit into our society? To me, it just seems so out in left field that it, it doesn't fit into my thinking about marriage. I think serial monogamy, we hear about serial monogamy maybe oh, more so than yeah. polygamy. Yeah. yeah. And I think people engage in that, which to me seems more ethical and moral for some reason. If you're in a monogamous relationship, you break up, you get into another monogamous relationship. Yeah. That's just my viewpoint. I don't polygamy. I can't even imagine. I can't that. either. So polygamy meaning multiple, multiple like wives, spouses yeah. or wives, yeah. and I there's suppose. polyamory, right? Which is right. Um, oh, seeing yeah. different people yeah. and being okay and having an yeah. open relationship, yes. right? Yes. So yeah. defining that. So for me, I just would say, I, I know it, it's out. You know, people have uh, uh, do this. Uh, I just cannot imagine that for myself. I'm just, yeah, I'm either. too much of a jealous person. Oh, <laughs> I feel like, I am too. Well, definitely possessive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we're running out of time, but this has been definitely a very <laughs> fascinating <laughs> subject. And I think on that last topic that we almost started talking about, we could have a whole <laughs> another program. Yes. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, ladies, for participating Thank in you. the discussion today. It was fun. And We'll see you all next time on It's a Woman's World.